I'm Father Thomas McGill from the Diocese of Motherwell. Just now we're in the middle of the season of creation, which was instituted by Pope Francis a number of years ago. It began at the beginning of September and will conclude on the 4th of October, the Feast of St. Francis of Assisi, the great saint of creation, who could see the glory of God in everything, in the sun and moon, in the animals, the birds of the air, the flowers of the field, and of course in his brothers and sisters. And Francis could give praise and thanksgiving to God for this good earth this created world. So it's good that this Sunday we listen to the parable of the rich man and the steward because it's all about stewardship. As we listen to the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, Jesus said to his disciples, there was a rich man and he had a steward denounced to him for being wasteful with his property. He called for the man and said, what is this I hear about you? Draw me up an account of your stewardship, because you're not to be my steward any longer. Then the steward said to himself, now that my master is taking a stewardship from me, what am I to do? Dig, I'm not strong enough. Go begging, I should be too ashamed. Ah, I know what I will do to make sure that when I am dismissed from office, <clears throat> there will be some to welcome me into their home. Then he called his master's debtors one by one. To the first he said, how much do you owe my master? One hundred measures of oil, was the reply. The steward said, here, take your bond, sit down straight away and write fifty. To another he said, and you, sir, how much do you owe? One hundred measures of wheat, was the reply. The steward said, here, Take your bond and write 80. The master praised the dishonest steward for his astuteness. For the children of this world are more astute in dealing with their own kind than are the children of light. On first reading and listening to that parable, it seems that that steward had been acting dishonestly and immorally. But the mention of the rich man makes us pause for thought. Because both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, rich people were generally considered a bit dodgy. For the most part, they had accumulated their wealth at the expense of others most especially the poor. They had trodden the poor into the dust. So if the steward appears to be acting dishonestly, how much more is the rich man dishonest? He had treated the earth as his bank, as a way of accumulating and amassing riches. For him, the rich man, this was the whole purpose of life. And then that life was spent in buying and selling, getting things, making them grow in order that he would become even wealthier. The steward forgives some of the debt owed by the other stewards to the master, and he does this off his own back. This can be seen as an early example of wealth redistribution. And he does so in order to make friends with these debtors. Nowadays, we in the Western world are often called consumers. That's an awful word. Because it implies that our main purpose is to buy and sell, to accumulate, to gather possessions, and then discard them when they no longer suit us. That word steward in the gospel is much more appropriate. 
We are stewards of God's good creation. All we have and all we are is pure gift from God. And this gift of the good earth given to us is a gift to be shared equally and equitably by all. Just as the steward forgave much of the debt of those other stewards, so we have to aim for a society in which all share equally in God's good earth. Because being consumers, we now know, truly affects our earth. With this environmental crisis caused by accumulation, most especially in the Western world, by plundering the earth, we see now that the earth cries out in pain. We see the, the tears of the earth in the great floods which have come about. And we witness the anger of the earth in those great fires. The earth is under duress. And only we as humans, and more so as Christians, can do something about it. We can change from being consumers to becoming stewards, ready to share equally in the goods of this earth, to change our lifestyles, to be transformed. And that is the purpose of the Lord's parable. At times they stop us up short in order to make us think and reflect, to look at our situation and make a decision. We can think that as individuals there is little we can do. But one by one we can truly achieve something. And this is the genius of the church. A communion and community of people who live and work together who dedicate themselves to the same aims. And the church can truly serve God's good earth by together allowing humanity to see that there is another way forward, another way of living. And when we share what we have equitably and equally with our brothers and sisters throughout the world, we make friends with them, even though we will never meet them because we recognize our common humanity and live in solidarity with them. We share deeply in the friendship that God has given us. As we come to the end of this season of creation, on the 4th of October, with St. Francis, we can all join together in praising and thanking and glorifying God for the beauty and the glory of creation in which we all have a share and of which all of us are stewards.